Brown for staying with us right here on the program. There are very critical matters that we're taking up tonight, such as the Supreme Court uh, verdict or position of the Supreme Court when the President and the Attorney General have gone to the President, approached the, I mean, approached the Supreme Court to seek clarification on sub, uh, Section 84, Subsection 12 of the Electoral Act. But the court said is an abuse of court process. Let's get some legal um, perspective to this one. I'm being joined by a senior advocate of Nigeria, Mr. Paul Ananaba. He's uh, with us uh, virtually on the program. Thank you so much, um, uh, Leonard Sig, for your time tonight. Give us a sense of what um, the outcome of today's uh, Supreme Court uh, sitting uh, means, uh, especially for our electoral jurisprudence and uh, of course for those who are following closely how this drama has played out between the national assembly politician and uh, the presidency yeah thank you uh, my, my brother and um, good evening nigerians um the point is that i had in this uh, studio when that action was uh, beginning stated clearly that um, there was nothing wrong with Section 8412 of the Electoral Act. And um, I'm happy that the Supreme Court came to that conclusion too. Um, the issues are very clear. Oh, by Section 232 of the Constitution, the original jurisdiction of the Supreme Court was stately, it was stated clearly there. And it is about the federation and the states, or between the states and the states when there are disputes. And suddenly there's an action where the president now sues the National Assembly. So you will see that it was it's not um, a competent suit. Now, Section 84 12 has nothing to do with the president. It has nothing to do with the president. It has nothing to do with the federation. It's just a simple provision of a legislation, which the president signed on the 25th of February this year. So today is 24th. So it is even less than four months. And we've already gone to Supreme Court and gotten a judgment. So that's the point. The Supreme Court is saying, the action is incompetent. It's an abuse of process. And when you hear abuse of process, it has many dimensions. It is when you uh, file an action which is improper, you have abused that process. One of them is forum shopping. Assuming that there, there would have been need for such action, it would have been action filed by those affected those political appointees by Section 8412, those are the people who could have gone to court. And if they had gone to court to challenge Section 8412, then it wouldn't have been uh, an originating, original suit, a uh, suit where the Supreme Court has original jurisdiction at all. That's what the Supreme Court is saying. So, so asking the Supreme Court to apply the blue, pre uh, blue pencil rule and strike out Section 8412 uh, um, cannot hold water. Now, what, the, what that simply means is that oh, L L this is in excess of the legislative competence of the National Assembly under Section 4 of the Constitution. It is not. The Supreme Court is saying the National Assembly has powers to make laws. The presidency cannot dictate to uh, the National Assembly uh, on how it makes laws. So gradually we are beginning, we are, we are going, the, the deepening our democracy by judicial interpretation, which is what many of us have been urging that the Supreme Court should step up, our courts should step up and, and give this type of judgments that deepens our democracy. Now, what is the intention of this? If I, if I may jump in quickly so that we can advance the conversation uh, in uh, bit after bit. Now, when we wonder, um, uh, I mean, uh, let us glean from your years of experience uh, in the bar. When we wonder that it is strike law fundamental 
the original jurisdiction of the apex court, the Supreme Court, uh, and what you have mentioned, the contradictions that um, the state between state, uh, state between state, federal government between states, and oh, I mean, for arms of government and and the other, and how the position, I mean, the premise in which uh, you can approach the court and government or the presidency can approach the government. So when we wonder, uh, at what point? Uh, is it embarrassing for you? I'm trying to put it in a in a very nice way. Uh, is it embarrassing to for the Supreme Court for a case that went from the Attorney General's office to the Supreme Court and court, the Supreme Court had to say it is abuse of court process? So that's why I'm asking: Is it not trite law? Is it not fundamental? Is it not basic principles yeah, um, of law? Yeah, yeah, so, some of these um, issues that the Supreme Court I, highlighted I, 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 and I, threw back I, to I, the plaintiff. I will not pass my own judgment over the judgment of the Supreme Court. I will simply end where the Supreme Court ended, which is said, where the Supreme Court said, it is an abuse of process. Now, it is less for those who went to the, who filed the action to know whether it is um, commendable to, for actions from such an, such a, an exalted office to be an action the Supreme Court considers to be uh, an abuse. Um, it gives concerns, it gives cause to worry, but we, we will keep on track. We will not leave, we will leave uh, the direction of a track. The point is that action shouldn't have been fired at all. Now, I was going to make a point that already parties have already had their conventions, um, primaries, and you if this, what would have been the effect of the Supreme Court dabbling into that and uh, striking out a, 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 a legislation that is less than four months old? Uh, what sanity does it bring? The president signed this electoral act. He has not been given any chance to operate. And there is already a suit at the Supreme Court to, to do away with that section. So these are the the issues to look at. And if you look at it, the primary, the conventions and the primaries uh, went smoothly and became a, a lot more manageable because the, the issue of political appointees and the level playing ground was installed. And that is what you gain from practicing democracy and getting the courts to interpret. And then we make progress. Now it is, it, 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 it's over. The, the 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 electorate are now the people not voting in the delegates and that's what it should be and not for political appointees in their roles by the time you are competing with an incumbent uh, the appointees are already there uh, you are already disadvantaged and i made that point some years, some weeks back All right. so mr Ananaba, yeah so i would like you to uh, take us through uh, the process that you think should have uh, the executive, if they wanted anything changed, what they naturally should have done in the process of lawmaking. Uh, before in, in, you go into that, uh, you see what is happening in the National Assembly, where a lot of the lawmakers are now jumping ship because of the grievances that uh, the Electoral Act has done to their career. Some of them who could not get tickets uh, can you touch on that implication? Because this section, um, ab initio, uh, the origin of all of this is that some of these lawmakers were afraid of the powers of their governors in the different states to determine who goes back to the National Assembly or who gets the ticket. So they wanted to fight that process, but it does look like they were not successful in doing that. Now there, is, there are implications of that, and now they are revolting and leaving their political parties because a huge number of them did not get a ticket and it's obvious they are not returning to the National Assembly. Can you touch on that? Yeah, you, you, are, you are right. In constitutional democracy, there is a jurisprudence that evolved in the United States called JOI. It is the jurisprudence of the original intention. So if you get into the jurisprudence of original intention in this instance, you come to where you were, where you were that is, um, this is why the National Assembly members put this. But don't forget that the National Assembly alone 
did not make this law. It also passed through the presidency, and the presidency raised objections, got satisfied, and assented to it. And that's part of what the Supreme Court is saying. You just assented to this to this uh, legislation a few weeks ago, and you are coming back to say, you also, who assented, you are saying, no, it should, it should be removed. That's the point. Now, yes, members of uh, the National Assembly will also need time to, uh, you know, uh, you used to have to hear the language, nascent democracy. We need, our democracy is, is deepening. People should know that law should not be made because of particular instances. And because uh, someone is dissatisfied, as they jump in. And you should also see that the Electoral Act has also clipped these jumpings. That jumpology is not helpful. So I see going forward our political parties developing along ideological lines. So you don't just move from being a Democrat today to become a Republican. It's not, it, it, it's, it's, it's not helpful to the country. So when we want to choose leaders, we know, okay, this is what this person is likely, where this party was likely to do, and which party to go to. Now, the, the fact that um, many of these people lost their seats, it's a political occurrence that will continue to come. So, um, whichever way they had gone about it, what is important to the average Nigerian today should be, oh, we now have some de more degree of sanity in our primaries. You no longer have the several thousands of people that will come for the primaries. You, what you now have is a few uh, delegates, and it will mature further to these delegates becoming um, well-chosen persons and not just um, increasing delegates by uh, having more political appointees. So that's what I take from that. Um, of course, some, uh, uh, some of the lawmakers may be licking their wounds, uh, um, just uh, to, could, to use that word, and some of them biting their fingers now because of what has uh, come out of that. Some regretting that maybe they should have thought differently, and this perhaps backfired. Uh, because in some of the political parties, for example, um, uh, we understand that it, there is an agreement uh, that the governors, will, uh, those who are seeking a return to office, will get automatic tickets. But some of these lawmakers couldn't get that, that bargain, and they have lost out. And there is a huge turnover in the National Assembly. Do you think that uh, uh, some of them who, who probably narrowly get back into the National Assembly, uh, would uh, what lesson do you think they would have taken out of this? And what perhaps, uh, it, it, with this huge turnover, what impact will it have on the quality of legislation? Because considering the history of uh, parliamentary politics world over, or parliamentary democracy, uh, experience also counts in the quality of legislation. Yeah, thank you. When the politician learn, learn lessons, I doubt. The lesson the politician will learn is what brings him back or her back to the office the next, at the next round of election. I think that's the only lesson the politician wants to learn. The same set of people, you play them again, and they think that that's a self-serving interest, and they, they go for it. But coming to um, the effect of having majority or having a large percentage of the legislators being fresh and new persons, it is actually a challenge. That is not... Um, the, the, the way the, uh, the democratic process is fashioned. You see, um, the, you hear the word ranking senator, ranking member of parliament. There is experience. There is experience, and experience is necessary. Even in our decisions, there are institutional memories. There are precedents. And many of these newer ones are going to uh, take time to 
to come to terms and acclimatize with the uh, parliamentary behaviors, parliamentary conduct, and that will take it in so much time. But if you have um, new and what the older ones are in the majority, or you have a good number of them, it helps them to learn fast. I, I, we used to have a proverb that if you go to a meeting where new uh, members are more than the old ones, it is difficult to run the meeting because uh, the new ones will vote in the, in the manner they think without actually carrying the institutional memory and history uh, as to uh, how to go. So it is not help, uh, very helpful to Nigeria as a country. I believe that there is need for us, the political party should look at it as the uh, carry on polit politicking, that we should not have very high turnover of legislators. Mm -hmm. we, new legislators, yeah. you know, it All is right. not helpful. Okay, so quick, uh, two quick questions before we, we close the program, uh, Leonard Silk. Uh, the first, uh, uh, the, I mean, the, the, the first question before the last uh, will be uh, the lessons for the presidency and the attorney general office. And perhaps uh, if you can put us through, um, what naturally should have been the standard procedure to go through instead of going through this route? If you do not like a section of the law in getting it fixed, the process of our legislation, our lawmaking, what should have been done? Just if you can quickly do that for us. In what I think should minutes. have been done is to introduce an amendment bill. And then um, it, it goes through the, the lawmaking process, the first reading, the second reading, third reading committee, and all that. And that, that's, that's, that's the that would have been more helpful. The reason is that it would have given Nigerians and the, their representatives a more opportunity to look, have a second look. And, and it wouldn't have been so rushed. But I think that the thought may have been that um, uh, the court's pronouncement, particularly at the Supreme Court, once as a, uh, as a pronouncement of the Supreme Court would have been faster and quicker and more permanent. Um, so I think the lesson has been learned, and um, as the country continues to move on, uh, subsequent governments will know that perhaps it would have been it would be better to uh, go back to the legislature because Section Four of the Constitution is still there. The legislature that has the power to actually make laws. Uh, yes, by by pronouncements that the realist jurisprudence is what they call say that is a law, but um, the, the the judges are not. Uh, legislators, they, they they are not there primarily to make uh, make laws. So, I think that lessons have been learned. Um, you know, all things being equal, but uh, in in in, in right. subsequent even in some states, I think that the law making procedure for amendments. That's why you have amendment of laws will be better than judicial interpretation. Judicial interpretation will look at the law as is and interpret. Amendments will give more uh, opportunity uh, for hearings, for objections, and um, uh, before it goes through. All right, before, be, let's close on this note and perhaps uh, quickly, uh, Leonard Silk. Uh, the position of the NBA, uh, the, 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 the statement from the president of the Nigerian Bar Association, Olumide Akbata, it says before the justices of the Supreme Court could pen their frustration, you know, it must have been that there is uh, something that have gone wrong badly. And you saw the agitation by the Supreme Court justices in what is happening in the judiciary, the incapabilities that they have experienced and uh, are in doing their, in carrying out their duty. This is a watershed for the judiciary. And uh, where do you think that the judiciary or the Supreme Court will go from here? Well, um, I, I, I'm not aware of any time the justices of the Supreme Court had uh, written in that manner. Uh, but it's important that we know that 
the judicial system, you know, regulates itself. There are there's the NJC, the N, and, and all that. Many other bodies, the body of the entire charts and all that, that will that come in to look at the judicial framework from time to time. Uh, I would think that for a justice of the Supreme Court to write, not and then in this instance, more than 10 of them wrote in writing, making complaint. It should be taken seriously, but it should not be taken out of context. It must be that they have, a, they have genuine concerns. And I agree with my president, uh, uh, Bata, that it is not something right. to uh, joke right. about, yes. Lana Sek, uh, Paul Ananaba, senior advocate of Nigeria. Thank you so much indeed for your thoughts tonight. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And that's uh, how we end uh, this Friday's edition of Politics Today live on Channels Television. Many thanks to everyone for watching until I uh, come your way again on Sunday at 8 p.m. Have a wonderful evening, everyone.